Hi guys, welcome back. This is Hassan is for Life, your favorite YouTube channel. I am Talal, your host. You are an awesomeness junkie and guess what? Today I have a phenomenal guest with me tonight. Um, she is actually somebody who started her career in the traditional sense. She was working in the corporate world. She studied entrepreneurship at MIT and then decided that it's not for her, okay? It's... Um, it, it just turned out that she was working in, in a job that was not the right fit for her. She wanted to go her own way. She wanted to more control on her life. And she decided to launch her own online business. She then found massive success in that. She's actually been running an infopreneur summit for the last three years. She has got multiple streams of income. She used to be a travel blogger. I mean, I, I can go on and on. There's lots to cover here. But let me just tell you, it's an incredible story because we had a quick catch up before the call. And um, there's, there's just so much value here. And there's so much for us to learn. And that's the key thing here. When I bring somebody on, my focus is to actually bring on somebody who can who can who's actually sometimes light years ahead of us okay so we can learn from them we can follow in their footsteps and we can all get a little bit better okay so today our guest is somebody who's truly incredible her name is bailey richard and she has written many books blogs and courses her co she's got coaching programs she runs many events she helps actually individuals launch her, their own profitable online enterprises um and she actually is respected she's a very respected member in her field okay there are lots of people who goes and, and buy her programs and you know get coaching from her and she has worked with obviously a lot of people from all walks of life so i think she's going to come on and just bring tremendous value to us tonight i'm really looking forward to this conversation so let's all put our hands together and welcome bailey richard to hustle is for life motivation bailey really excited to have you on and i know you have an incredible story i just i, I just want to say thank you at this stage for making the time to be here with us thank you so much for having me and for that just truly wonderful introduction i'm flattered <laughs> well I, I i i was actually really impressed by your story I, we actually got connected because i came across you through uh, our mutual friend dory clark uh, who i've actually interviewed on my channel previously and I'll put the link below in the description for people who are interested she just launched a new book entrepreneurial you about monetizing your expertise and uh, you know creating multiple streams of income and I'm actually reading the book right now so it, it's absolutely phenomenal but we got connected because we we kind of in that mutual circle with Dory and I found out about the infopreneur summit 2018 which we'll talk about in a bit and I heard a little bit about your story and I was like wow this is this is amazing I really need to reach out to Bailey and see if she'll be willing to you know spare some time and be here with us on the channel and you accepted I was uh, I was very excited at that point and uh, you know what it's uh, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to this conversation thank you me too <laughs> awesome so Bailey let's um Let's go back. Let's back go back to the point where you are at college. You have just graduated and you've got a job. You've got a really good job, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened? Uh, so I what went, happened? <laughs> I, I went to school for engineering and basically up until that point, I had been following the American dream that's been prescribed for all of us, right? You know, you do really well in school. I was high school valedictorian. Then you get a scholarship, you go to college, you pick a good major that's going to get you a good career. And that's why I went into engineering. Yeah, I love math and science and I have a general aptitude for it, but awesome. I, I think I... I was persuaded because that's going to give you a stable career, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. So I graduated and eventually made my way to California where I ended up working as a consultant. And it really only took me a couple of years. It was 2013 when I underwent a little bit of a quarter life crisis. I was exactly 25 years old at the time. Right. And I basically, you know, I just, I saw my future in front of me and I thought, you know, if this is the life that I'm going to live, this corporate life for the, for the rest of my days, yeah. then it's not worth it. This isn't making me happy, you know. And it's funny because I had almost everything that you are supposed to want to be happy, right? I had it all. You know, I had this 
societally prestigious job as an engineer. You know, I was making a, a, a good salary, living in California. I had my own apartment, my own car, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And I wasn't I wasn't happy. Mm. So I decided, you know, what did I really want? So I, I, I made a list, actually. You know, I said, OK, I want to spend more time with my family who was living on the other side of the country back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. I wanted more time for my philanthropy. I wanted um, some more money, to be honest. Um, you know, <laughs> I just felt like, well, I mean. I had a good salary, but I just felt like there was there was a way that I could grow my my personal wealth and then also, you know, so that I could do more stuff in the world. You yeah. know, I think when I when I quit, you know, I was making like 65 or 70,000 a year, which of course is like a very good salary, mm. but it wasn't where I always kind of saw myself, you know. Right. And I also, you know, I just, I wanted to do more travel. You know, I got what, like two weeks of vacation a year. So I was thinking, you know, this is not enough for me to be able to take the kind of trips that I want around the world. And it's not enough for me to be able to go back and see my family and travel at the same time during the year. Cause I was spending all my vacation, like visiting my family, yeah. um, you know, so it was, it, so I just felt like, you know, how, how could I get all those things that I wanted? And I thought about it and I thought, I, I think I need to be my own boss. You know, mm. I think I need to have my own business or I need to, you know, just go out and work for myself. And so how I actually started this was I started doing info products in the travel space. Right. So, um, I, you could call it travel blogging, I guess, but it's not really like it is today. Like I wasn't on Instagram. Like it, Instagram wasn't even really a thing back then. Like I was doing info products. So I, the first product I ever did was a book about how to travel abroad. I did online courses about how to travel. You, I was doing public speaking at colleges because college students were my primary audience around mm. the age of you know 18 20 they were going abroad for the first time i had studied abroad twice so i had a lot of you know connections there and that was going really well so i decided that i was going to quit my job and i wanted to enroll at MIT for grad school to study entrepreneurship and really grow my business so my goal after going to MIT was that i was going to be fully self employed that was my goal right. um and and what i actually ended up doing which surprised even myself was that i pivoted my my focus for my business because a couple of years into doing these travel stuff I had so many friends, acquaintances, even strangers, honestly, come to me and ask, how did you self-publish that book on your own without an agent? Mm. How were you able to make those online courses and make them profitable? How are you getting these public speaking gigs? And so all of this stuff, which I now call infopreneurship, making your income online through info products and services. Yeah. Um, I had so many people asking me about how I did this. So in the beginning, I didn't immediately switch over, but I just started kind of on the side sharing my knowledge about these topics with people. My very first course about infopreneurship stuff was my self-publishing course right. and then that was just taking off and growing so well and I just saw such a huge need for that mm. that I decided you know what um, I'm I'm really overwhelmed trying to run two businesses at once you know trying to do my travel stuff trying to do the um, the coaching stuff so I'm just I had to make a choice so I'm gonna do coaching full time, and so it was around 2015 that I pivoted into doing coaching full time, and um, and I've never looked back, and I've let my business grow, and it's been totally awesome. Wow, wow, awesome! And, and it, it shows because you've got a smile on your face from ear to <laughs> ear, so it it, it shows. That's awesome. But the, you know the, the incredible thing, the thing that uh, I think I I find really fascinating, and I think lots of other people can relate to out there as well who are watching this right now is the fact that you had a really good corporate job, right? You had everything yeah. really that everybody else is looking for. And mm -hmm. yet you were not happy. Yeah. There was something missing, right? There was something missing. Yeah. But you didn't just stay there and it's like, oh, you know, well, at least I've got this job and at least I'll, 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 I've got some money coming in and, you know, I've got a decent lifestyle. I'm here in California, you know. What, what more could I really want? Maybe I should be just be more 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 you know fulfilled i should feel more fulfilled i should be right. more you know content you actually went ahead and took action yeah and and, and yeah. that's the great thing you went ahead you took action you tried different things you tried the travel you know blogging and and the travel info products and now you're working in terms of infopreneurs uh, you know helping yeah. entrepreneurs that you know launch their info products and that shift 
I think is really powerful. And I think lots of people out there might be in a similar sort of situation. They can relate to this. They have been, you know, going down a path with their career or their job and they suddenly realized, right, this is not something that I wanted. And they want to make that shift. So really, right. I, I want to ask you, what, what was it? What kind of mindset did you have at that point? What sort of beliefs did you have that allowed you to actually, you know, take that leap? And essentially go ahead, take action, and find success in a completely unrelated field. Yeah, sure. So, you know, there were tons of people who didn't know me that well. I would say like my coworkers who thought my decision was crazy. You know, so there are <laughs> gonna there are gonna be people out there that, that aren't gonna understand what you're going through. Mm. But the people who were close to me, my friends and family, they knew that I was not doing well. Because when I say that I was having a quarter life crisis and that I was unfulfilled, yeah. it actually goes, it goes deeper than that, if I'm being honest. Um, in my TEDx talk that I gave about this time in my life, I reveal and, and I'll share with you that I actually was having um, really physical and visceral reactions to my unhappiness. I was having anxiety and panic attacks and wow. It, yeah, I was not sleeping. I was up at all hours of the night calling my parents and talking to them about this. Mm. And so it was it was obvious that I had to make some sort of change in my life because I was on a you know a destructive path. Mm. And you know, it, I couldn't control what was happening, you know, how I was feeling. And so the people who were close to me were happy for me when I made that decision and I was happy for me when I made that decision because you know, I don't I don't think that like happiness in life is everything. You know, like we all go through the bad times and the sad times and, and I value that very much. I don't think every moment of your life is gonna be happy or it has to be happy or that we have to be smiling all the time. Right. But I think that if, if if that's happening to you for a long time, you know, if you're doing weeks, months, years not happy and it's it's manifesting itself in this way you deserve to take a look at your life and say, well, maybe this isn't the path I'm supposed to be on. Mm. And I know that's a very hard thing to say out loud. It's a very hard conclusion to come to, especially because, you know, you spend all this time and money on your education. You spend all of this time and money, you know, trying to build up your career for the first couple years after school. Yeah. You know, to, to make such a leap is, you know, it's a leap of faith. There's some investment you have to make as well. So, you know, it can it can be tough. But the way I saw it was that I kind of had two choices. I was like, well, I can stay here and continue being miserable mm. or... I can take this leap of faith and it could go better. Yeah, I could also I could be miserable with this leap of faith too, but I think there's an opportunity here for things to go better. And obviously I was right in making in making that choice. You know, somebody once told me that don't continue, you know, don't stick with a mistake or don't continue making a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it, mm, you know? Wow, that's so, powerful. I know, yeah, that's yeah. so powerful, right? That is I can't, powerful, yeah. I can't remember where I heard that or I wish I could give credit to whoever that was, but you know, and it, it's the truth, like don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. And that's how I was feeling. Like I spent so much time on like school and all that sort of stuff and you know, I could have just said, well, I've already spent four years at college, I better spend the next 50 years doing this because of that, <laughs> like, that's foolishness, you know, yeah. like, she, yeah. And, and to those people out there also who are thinking, oh, well, like, she wasted her education, I actually don't see it that way at all. Mm. Like, I would, n I would not be where I am today if I didn't do my two study abroads and start my travel, you know, blogging stuff and my info products and things like that. I wouldn't have met my best friend, who's still my best friend today, you know, if I hadn't gone to college. Like, college and, and education of any kind is never ever wasted even oh, yeah. if you're even if you don't end up doing like the same degree mm. and I it's a little bit more abstract but I think a lot of the things I learned at college like helped me in my career helped me to be a good coach helped me to be a good businesswoman like so I mean even though I'm not in the strict engineering field anymore like it's not wasted at all like I've still been my life has been so much enriched because of all of the college and education that I got and then I just, you know, I just let life doesn't always follow this linear path, you know, and, and mine hasn't. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 
for people who are watching this, I want you to take a step back. And I want you to really think about what Bailey has just said about not clinging to a mistake because you've spent a long time making that mistake. And I think that's really, really powerful. And where where's one area in your life where you might have made a mistake? Is that your job, your career, your relationships, your finances, whatever it is? And really think about, is it worth carrying on? Is it really worth carrying on? Are you really willing to endure the pain for the rest of your life just because you made a mistake and you spent a lot of time making it? And Bailey is somebody who actually took action. She took action and she's found massive success, right? And she's still, like, if you, if you, if you, if you look at Bailey, she's what? She's still, you know, not even 30 yet. And she's found massive success. So what's really truly possible for you? And it took her a few really short years. She started in around 2015, 2016. That's when really things started to take off. And we're now at the start of 2018. And this in very short period of time, Bailey has found lots of success. So what's really truly possible for you? And I urge you guys to, you know, spend some time thinking about it and then take action. Go ahead and take action. Because I think there's a really powerful message here. Thank you for sharing that, Bailey. That was, that was super awesome, super powerful. And I also wanted to talk about, you know, when you said that nothing is wasted. I think you're absolutely right. Nothing is really wasted because you have to walk through a sea of fog in order to gain clarity. Clarity does yeah. not come easy. You have to walk through that sea of fog. And that's what happens, right? You go down a path and you realize this is the wrong path. That doesn't mean you wasted all this time. This just means you can now eliminate that option and then move on to something yeah. else. Absolutely, absolutely. Action gives you clarity. You know, like I had no idea. If, if I was sitting in my room back in 2013 at my apartment in California, I could never have come to the conclusion I should coach on infopreneurship. That would have <laughs> never, that would have never come to me automatically. You can't just sit in your room and expect that like your your future is going to just unfold in your mind and it'll all be great. You have to you have to get up and you have to take those next steps. And those next steps that you take might not be your fine you know your final destination but it's going to get you closer either you're going to figure something out that you need to eliminate or you're going to figure out you know some way to move forward like you have to take those steps you know i didn't immediately go from engineer to coach i had to do school i had to do the travel stuff then i had to start doing the coaching like it's a process right and i didn't exactly know that this was the entire path that it was leading me down way back then Mm. But the fact that I took steps forward, you know, what's that saying? Like, you, you might not be able to see the whole staircase, but you have to take the first step, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So in 2013, I was at the bottom of the staircase and I couldn't really see all the way up to the top, but I saw just the next steps in front of me and I knew they were leading somewhere and I had to trust that that somewhere was going to be better than the miserable feelings that I had, you know, where I was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, those feelings that you had at that time, can we try and put them into words? Let's, let's try and put them into words. So did you feel trapped? No, did yeah, you, definitely. Did you feel stuck? Yeah, did yeah, absolutely. Did you feel absolutely. frustrated? All the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, yeah, I was... Those, those negative feelings that I had that you, that you just said, you know, the trapped, the stuck, the frustrated, a lot of that came from the fact that um, in my own, in my corporate job, I wasn't really given a lot of autonomy. You know, I'm a team mm. player and I have absolutely no problem, you know, doing whatever needs to be done in order to move the company forward. But I was getting, you know, I was micromanaged a lot. I was mm. feeling really frustrated that my bosses didn't see enough potential in me and weren't giving me an opportunity to display my skills and really sharpen my skills and do more design work. Um, you know, I was just I was actually living in Orange County at the time but my a lot of my jobs were in LA and I had to drive almost every single day from Orange County to LA and back and I would talk with my company and say things like you know can I like get you know an office up there or something and you know they weren't really willing to like work with me so what I was frustrated by like they weren't they weren't nurturing and seeing the potential that I had you know yeah. like I wanted to invest in them in all these ways and it really wasn't happening and I just thought if I my own boss I can give myself those opportunities, you know, I can carve those that path for myself. Yeah, yeah. And again, really powerful because 
you know, you didn't just wait for something to land in your lap, you know? Yeah. It, it wasn't just like, oh, the miracle's going to appear out of thin air and land in my lap if I just sit here and carry on, you know, and if I just have thoughts of what I could be doing and what I could be achieving. You just went ahead, took action, and just see where it went. And obviously, here we are in 2018 on this uh, interview and talking about all that stuff, and that's awesome. And the the thing I think is really important is the fact that throughout all this period where you had to make those changes and where you had to kind of essentially take a leap of faith and be like, you know what, I'm going to go and pursue this thing and see where it goes and leave that security of your job, leave the, the familiarity of that situation and go into the unknown. You were not kind of dazed by that. No, you let it not, get to you. No, not at all. I mean, part of that is admittedly just my personality. Like I'm an ad, I'm an adventurous person, and I think that I'm more comfortable with risk than a, an average person may be. I'm I'm okay with risk, so I think yeah. we have to acknowledge that. But I honestly, regardless of that, I saw it as an exciting time in my life because. You know, yes, the unknown can be scary, but it can also be exciting. You know, feeling, I knew that where I was was not a good place. And I felt like motivated, I felt empowered because I was taking steps to get better, to do something better with my life. And that was exciting to me. So, yeah, yeah I, I, there's def, it's understandable that taking those next steps can be scary or it can be nerve wracking and worrisome. Abs- absolutely. And those should, feelings should not be discounted. But I, for one, was excited because I knew that it was going to lead to really great things. I was going to open up these doors. I think as well, you know, when I was working in the corporate environment, I saw what my career was going to look like for the next 50 years. You know, mm. I just, I saw the whole thing planned out. And it, it's not just that that was, you know, boring or not exciting, but it wasn't what I wanted. You yeah. know, with this, with this new path, I may not have been able to see, I definitely couldn't see 50 years down the road, but I was excited at all of those possibilities and everything that could happen and the new challenges that it was going to bring me. And even though I didn't know everything that was going to happen, I already knew that it was going to be better and more fulfilling, um, you know, just from the very start than what I was leaving. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I personally can relate very strongly to that because my full-time job is as a math lecturer. And if I stay in that job, I can see if I stay there for the next 40 years, I'll still be teaching algebra, I'll still be teaching geometry, and I'll still have the same pay, and I'll still be in the same, you know, kind of place, and I'll still be you know, uh, have, have, the, have the same position, there will be no further development or progression, etc. And obviously, that's, that's something that I'm trying to work on and see, well, can I actually build something on the side where I can go ahead and then move away from my, my daytime job and uh, go and pursue something that I'm really passionate about. So I, I can totally relate to that. I can absolutely yeah. relate to that. And that's really powerful. Awesome. So Bailey, let's talk about the Infopreneur Summit and the infopreneurs you're working with and the, uh, how you're helping them actually you know, launch their info products. And for people who actually don't even know, maybe you can talk a little bit about what info products actually are. Yeah, sure. So infopreneurship is a portmanteau of the two words information and entrepreneurship. So basically, it just means that you're building a business. Usually, it's something like a personal brand. You know, my website is baileyrichard.com. You know, I'm using my own, you know, person to kind of build a brand around. Um, But basically, what you're doing is you're taking your life experience, your knowledge, your skills, and your passions, and you are putting those into information products and services that you create and sell. So with the products, it can be things like ebooks or hardback books. It can be online courses and video trainings, how-to guides, anything like that. With services, it can be things like coaching or you know things like that, or giving public speaking, giving live presentations, workshops, groups, masterminds. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can put your information in, in to serve people, products and services. But that's basically what infopreneurs are, and you can be an infopreneur in so many different fields. You know, you can be a fitness coach, blogger, instructor, right? That has 
books about how to lose weight and get lean and has courses and video trainings that you post on YouTube every day about how to do this particular exercise the right way to lose the most weight. But then you can also offer, you know, your personal training VIP coaching services where you go out and meet people and you train them in their own home or at a gym or something, right? You can do the same thing if you were like a relationship coach or a travel blogger type person. So there's so many different ways that you can transport your knowledge and experience. And those are what I just named are some of the most popular niches or industries, but there's so many others. Like I worked with somebody who is, uh, he was a client of mine. He's an origami master. Oh, wow. And he, yeah, right? Uh, so amazing. His work is fantastic. Mm. And he puts together like books and he has a like ridiculously popular Instagram and a website and trainings and speaking all about how to do origami and that sort of thing. I worked with somebody else who is an expert in how to care for African American women's hair oh, and wow. how to make it like longer, stronger, thicker. And so she not only has her own line of products, um, which is less info products, but she mm. also has like courses and like books and trainings, or she'll come to your house and teach you like what regimen you need. And that's like a personal service, right? So that's what infopreneurship really is. So you can do it. You, I mean, really, there's so many different ways that you can take your life experience and turn it into income that way. Um, so one of the things that um, I offer as a part of my business is I specifically help beginning and budding infopreneurs. So, you know, if you're already making 10,000 a month, you're not my client. I work with people <laughs> who are just getting started, who are mm. like, I've just discovered what infopreneurship is. I love it. I want to do this. That's, that's my focus. So every year for the past three years, I have hosted an online event called the Infopreneur Summit, which is a virtual summit online where I bring together, this year we have over 40, like 42 speakers mm. um, that are business coaches, digital marketing experts, social media experts, people like that, people that do what I do. And I bring them all together and I've interviewed them and I share that content, share those interviews with, um, you know, online so that people can learn for free about what infopreneurship is and how they can get their businesses started. Right, awesome, awesome, that's great. And it's actually very amazing, you said there's over 40 speakers this time, I, that's phenomenal, that's really great, yeah, that's awesome. I think, I think it's like 42 or something. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's that's phenomenal. So uh, first of all, you know, for people who are watching this, uh, the first thing you know, I, w I want to say is that I'm going to put the link to that below in the description of the video. It's going to be going on, I think, from the 19th to the 22nd of February 2018. Is that right, Bailey? That is correct, yeah. Perfect, so I'm gonna put the link straight in. Uh, so whenever you're actually watching this, go ahead, click that link, and it will take you to the sign-up page where you can sign up to be a part of that uh, Infopreneur Summit, okay, for 2018. So that's the first perfect. thing. But I do want to uh, quickly talk about the fact that there might be somebody out there who listened to this and they got excited. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, that sounds really cool. I don't have to like go ahead and, you know, buy a warehouse full of stuff and then try right. and open many stores and then sort out the logistics and employ people and try and sell this stuff and pay the bills and secure sites and contracts. It's just a matter of I can use my own expertise and experience and knowledge to create a course or an ebook or put together a mastermind or I can get speaking engagements where I can go and get money for it. Yes. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they're excited by that. But they don't really know where to start. Sure. It's something completely new to them. They don't know what's the right thing. Should I be writing a book? Should I be focusing on doing speaking engagement? Should I be doing all of them? Right. What advice do you have for that person? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, because I work with beginners, this is actually like the number one problem. Um, so I do have a book called Turn Your Life Experience into Income that you can get for free. If you just go to baileyrichard.com, you can download it. And inside that awesome. book, I outline a six step process for getting started. Mm. So basically, um, you should start at step one and work your way up to step six. And the first couple of steps don't take that long. So the first step is about choosing your niche which just means, you know, are you going to be doing fitness or relationship or origami? So, mm. you know, you kind of need to start out by figuring out, you know, your target audience and like what it is that you want to teach basically. Right. The second thing is figuring out your message. So, you know, okay, if you are going to be in the fitness space and you want to work with women, maybe it's that, you know, you can, 
get your before baby body back. You know, that's like your message. You know, that's kind of like the angle or the, we say sometimes, do you have this word um, in England with shtick? That's like your shtick, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we say that stuff like that in Pittsburgh all the time. Right. So that's like your message. That's part number two. Number three is working on your branding, you know? So are you going to be one of those, you know, like, fitness coaches that's ridiculously peppy all the time and you have neon colors and you're just, you know, it's all about positivity or, you know, are you going to, I've seen business coach, I mean, in business coaching, like the branding is all over the place. Everybody's kind of different. You know, mine is, you know, purple, green and gray, but I've seen other people that are like luxurious with like gold foil and mm -hmm. like red velvet and stuff. So that's step three. And then step four it's, so those steps don't take that long. Step four is about working on your platform, meaning that you need to get your website up. You know, you need to either have a blog or a podcast or a video channel somewhere that you can share free content, you know, somewhere that you can display your expertise and, you know, write articles and stuff like that. Yeah. And then we get into the final steps, which is number five, creating revenue streams, and number six, developing a sales funnel or doing, you know, your marketing and stuff like that. Um, so I go into depth about all of these steps, give you exercises, give you examples, give you all sorts of stuff inside of the book. But basically, when I work with my VIP clients, yeah. that's the exact process that we go through. Right. You know, so that's what I work with them on. And if you're wondering, you know, where do I start? You start at step one. Nice, nice, awesome. And again, uh, I'll put the link below in the description of the video so people can go and check that out. I think that'll be absolutely awesome. Um, Bailey, you added a lot of value there, I think, to people and clarified a few things for, for the people who are just sitting there thinking, well, where do I even go? What, how, how do I start? And what should I be working on, right? So, you know, for those people, obviously, go ahead, follow Bailey's advice and also go and get that free ebook that uh, Bailey's got on the website and check that out and go through those steps. Awesome. So, Bailey, the Infopreneur Summit, what's the real focus behind the summit? What what can people expect from being at the summit? Gosh, you are going to take away so much information and learning from these experts. So the summit is four days long, and each one of the days has a theme. So day one is getting started, day two is getting seen, day three is getting paid, and day four is getting sustainable. Awesome. So each one, yeah, so the idea behind those four days is that it kind of mimics like the growth of your business, from getting started to just getting visible, to start creating money from it, and then you know and making enough money so you can actually actually have a sustainable business. That's kind of the idea. So, you know, even though all of the talks are something that you would need to know as a business owner eventually, maybe some of the talks are not where you're at right now, you know? Mm. Maybe if you've like just learned about infopreneurship, you need to be starting on day one. So you really want to show up on day one and like watch all of those interviews. You know, of course you can watch all of them if you want, but but maybe you don't need to watch all of them. Right. Um, you know, there every single guest speaker is talking about their own specific topic. We don't really have that much overlap on topics. Awesome. So you can go to the homepage at infopreneursummit.com and just look at what each one of the speakers is talking on. I've written the name of their talk and their topic on that page. And so you can plan to watch that speaker's interview if it's something that you really need in your business right now. So it's really cool that we're able to just cover so many different topics, yeah. but just but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to watch everything. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. That's great. And, you know, there are going to be 42 speakers and it's going to be right. going on for four days. So people can go and pick and choose whatever they want and go ahead and just check that out. I do have a quick question, though. If somebody, for example, is busy, they can't make it, they're stuck with their job or any other commitment. Is there a way for them to actually go on to the website or the page later on and, and catch up? Actually, there is, but you're going to have to pay for it. It's called the right. Infopreneur Summit All Access Pass. So what happens when you go to the infopreneursummit.com homepage is mm -hmm. that you'll have an opportunity to register for your free ticket, and that's going to give you information about how you can watch the interviews when they go live during the summit from the 19th to the 22nd. But each one of those interviews is only going to be available for 24 hours each. So right. on day one, all the interviews go up at 10 a.m. Eastern at the same time for 24 hours. On day two, those interviews come down and the day two interviews go up. So right. that's how we do it. Okay. Now, if 
If you miss any of the interviews that you desperately wanted to see, or you want to just get access to all of the interviews right now so you don't have to wait, or you want access to them for life so that even when the event is over, you can still keep watching them, yeah. then you're going to want to grab that all access pass. There's a million opportunities. After you register, you'll be given a chance to purchase it. You'll be sent emails and things like that. Um, but then also inside of that all access pass, not only do you get instant and lifetime access to the membership area that has all the free session interviews, but we also give you double the, the content, double the value. You are actually going to get a second advanced session interview with every single speaker on the summit. And it's basically a deep dive. Some of them are tutorials where we go a little bit deeper into their topic and really deliver some advanced knowledge um, that they're an expert on. And there's other stuff in there too. MP3 downloads, a chance to win prizes. There's like a lot of extra bonus stuff. So in my opinion, grabbing the pass is definitely the best way to take advantage of, of this. But even if you just watch the free sessions, you're still going to take away a lot. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, that sounds phenomenal. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. So again, people, I urge you to go ahead, take action, click the link below in the description of the video and check out the Entrepreneur Summit 2018. I think it's going to blow your mind away. There's a lot of value there. There are 42 different speakers talking about different things. It's going over four days. It's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. And I think it will add a lot of value to you. Now, Bailey, let's go in a slightly different direction. Sure. What kind of mindset and what kind of traits or uh, you can talk about qualities do you need to be the successful entrepreneur in the modern economy? Yeah. So I'm glad you asked this question because this is something that I'm actually teaching in my Facebook group a lot. And I really try to emphasize that my infopreneurs, if they want to be successful, that they adopt this mindset and what I call it the abundance mindset. So the opposite of an abundance mindset is scarcity mindset. Right. So scarcity mindset means that you're always in competition with other people. You only work alone. You can't work with other people because then you'd be helping them and we don't want to help them. They're a competition. There's never enough money and I need to get the most money. Mm. We do not want to have that attitude. The absolute best way for an infopreneur to succeed is by collaborating with other infopreneurs in their industry. Whether it's on a summit, whether you host your own summit, whether you have a podcast and you're doing interviews of other people, or even if you just want to be interviewed by other people, mm -hmm. you have to rely on other people in your niche and in your industry to help you and you help them that's the only way that you're going to grow your business. It's through all of those different opportunities, interviews, summits, um, joint webinars, joint ventures, participating in groups together, like all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So having an abundance mindset is all about recognizing there's room for everyone at the top. Just because they're successful doesn't mean I can't be successful. We can both be successful. Um, there's enough money for everyone, and I can make as much as I want. And just because someone else made some doesn't mean that I don't get to have any. That's not how it works. That's not how money, that's not how business works. And so I'm always stressing to people in my community, support one another, collaborate with one another, be happy for one another's success. You know, all that sort of stuff is a part of being having an abundance mindset. And if that's the kind of mindset you have, you're already leagues above other people because that mindset is going to what help you is going to be what's going to help you get uh, and be successful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely believe in actually coming from a place of value and actually helping other people in their journey. And if you help other people with their journey, then everybody else then turns around and is like, well, how can we help you? And that's where real value is. So instead of competing, you need to be collaborating. And yes, yes. And I think that's that's really powerful. So awesome. I love that. And uh, again, thank you for sharing that. I think, again, for a lot of people, this will this would not only add value to them, but actually clarify what it takes to be successful as an entrepreneur and actually as an infopreneur. Yeah. So Bailey, you, you talked about the fact that you have 42 speakers coming on, on, you know, on, on this new, uh, infopreneur summit. Can you tell a little bit about 
the speakers, how did you choose them? What was special about them that you decided, look, I need this person to come onto the summit in 2018 and talk to talk to everybody? Yeah, so that's an interesting question because when other summit hosts are putting their events together, a lot of times they think that the way they're going to be most successful and serve their audience the best is if they get the most high level celebrities in their field. You know, I'm in, you know, business and digital marketing and stuff, so like I would get Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss <laughs> and Amy Porterfield, right? Yeah. And and I've never met those people. I'm sure they're lovely. Yeah. But the thing but the thing is, I don't know them. Like we're not friends, you know what I mean? And so what I do with my summit is I try to think of a, a couple different quali qualifications, right? So the first one is that the content that they're going to deliver is relevant to my audience. Mm. So if somebody wants to be on my summit and they want to talk about real estate, I'm going to say no because that has nothing to do with infopreneurship, right? So yeah. first and foremost, whatever they are delivering has to be relevant to my audience. So that's the first thing. Bye. The second thing is that I'm not interested in bringing on the most high level celebrities because the truth is, as from the perspective of the host, I want my um, guest speakers to help me promote the event, right? Mm. A lot of times those high level people um, don't don't promote, they don't really see themselves as a partner with you. Yeah. What they see it is, it's just a, another interview, just an opportunity for them to get more exposure. And it's not just that I want my event to be promoted, that's part of it, but also I'm trying to build up relationships with these people. Mm. I'm trying to make them my, my colleagues and I want all of us to come up in business together. And so there's, I feel greater opportunity for that to happen when I pick people that are at my same level of business or maybe a little bit higher than me. You know, yeah. somebody that can help me grow a little bit. Um, but I don't need to find people, you know, that are already, you know, just insanely popular and famous and stuff like that. I don't really need that. So, you know, what that's one of the honestly good things about doing a summit, though. I have a lot of people who are interested in doing summits as beginners, and they'll say to me, but I don't have a big network of celebrities. Can I still host a summit? And I'll say, absolutely. In fact, you should. Like summits are perfect for beginners because it gives you a chance to seek out those people that you want to be business colleagues and friends with and to give them an opportunity through your summit to share their message. Yeah. And then, you know, that's how you guys give back to one another. And it's really a great strategy for beginners to grow their business, to grow their network and all this sort of stuff. But those are those are some of my qualifications for choosing people. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And that's good. I, I, you know, you're absolutely right. If you bring on somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk or, you know, uh, Tim Ferriss, etc. That's great. That's awesome. But at the same time, sometimes they're just light years ahead. I mean, they, they look back and, you know, they, you might not even be able to relate to them. Right. So, like, I don't... I don't think that that would be the best thing to do for the audience simply because if the audience can't even relate to them, then what's, what's the point of actually hosting the summit? Because that's great that, you know, you're able to bring them on, but they're just absolutely light years ahead of everybody else. Right. Yeah. So yeah, no, I absolutely, I absolutely uh, understand that. And that's great. So this is really great. The fact that you're actually trying to promote other people who are in the same sort of field and who are your friends or who you want to actually, you know, add, add them to your network and you're collaborating with them and you, you're trying to essentially raise the tide. So all the ships are lifted with the tide. I, I love that. I love that. It's, again, talking about the abundance mindset and it, it shows you're actually living it. So people who are watching this, there you go. This is how it's done. Okay. Live. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So... Bailey, let's um, let's talk a little bit about what are you focusing on for the rest of 2018? Yeah, so the summit, like I said, is going live from February 19th to 22nd. And after the summit is immediately over, um, I always am very transparent with my results. So I'm going to draw up this really big case study and we're going to talk about that in my community for a couple of weeks. After that, I'm going to be focusing on teaching online courses, a really hot topic. Uh, I have a annual program called High Value Course Academy, which basically is an eight-week group program where I help people launch their own high-value signature online course. So that's going to be launching this summer. 
and we do it every year and this year it'll be in the summer and um, so basically from the summit until that program I'm gonna be creating new content about courses videos blog posts teachings all that sort of stuff and then once that's over in the fall I have some surprises and some goodies that I'm gonna be sharing with my community uh, to to be revealed later but that's <laughs> that's kind of um, that's the plan for the rest of the year fantastic Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Bailey is, um, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things. Okay. Uh, and it's been absolutely tremendous having you on. I'm just wondering, is there anything you want to talk about that maybe we haven't touched upon yet? Mm. Well, I, I was talking with a, a potential client the other day on our strategy call. And one of the things that I always just like to tell people is that you don't have to quit your job today to become an infopreneur. And I would actually recommend that you don't. Um, one day you might decide to quit your job, but there's so many, so many of you watching out there are probably still working like a nine to five because this is my ideal client, right? So that's what I know. You're probably still working a nine to five job that you maybe don't like or that you maybe like to leave and you have this vision of what life can be. You can work on your own, you can have your own business, you can travel and you will get there. But there's so many things, like I mentioned, those first couple steps of the six step process, figuring yeah. out your target audience, your message, your brand, starting your website. You can and should do all of those things while you're still working your job. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do them in the evenings, you can do them on the weekends, you can do them on your lunch break. I just say that because people tend to get excited from watching interviews like this. You know, they tend to be like, all right, I'm so fired up. Like, I want to do this. And that's awesome. And I'm excited. And I hope you reach out because I want to talk to you. Yeah. But there's there's a lot of steps that you kind of need to do before you quit your job. So I had a potential client that called me the other day um, for a strategy call so that I could work with him as his coach. And he's like, I'm so ready to do this. Like, I, I hate my job. I'm totally going to quit. And I'm just like, you have a wife and two kids and a house. And like, I don't want you living on savings for a year because yeah. it's going to take hmm. several months or, or more a year or a year and a half like, like to start to get enough money to like replace your salary like it takes time you know this stuff doesn't happen overnight and I don't want to give anybody the impression that you know you can put out an online course tomorrow and be a millionaire that's not how it works yeah. you can build a sustainable business that can replace your nine to five income absolutely but it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take a lot of effort and you know, you can't expect overnight results. So I'm ex super excited for those people listening that are motivated, that are excited, that want to do this. Awesome. Reach out. I totally want to talk to you, but don't quit your job tomorrow. Um, please just, you know, get, get the ebook, start reading that, start working on some of those early phase things that you need to do, building your website, your branding, all of that stuff and build your business while you're still at your company. And then, you know, once you have some money coming in, then that's when you can start thinking, okay, is it, is it ready for me to scale and, and to do this full time and, or not, you know? Yeah. And amazing advice. Absolutely amazing advice. I absolutely love it. Um, and people who are watching this again, you know, make sure you follow that advice and again, you know, make sure you take action and reach out to Bailey. So let's, uh, let's, let's actually talk about that, Bailey. How can people reach out to you? Yeah, so you can definitely check out my website at baileyrichard.com and get access to all of my freebies, books, courses, and stuff like that there if that's what you're interested in. Um, there's a contact form on the website you can reach me at or you can always just email me directly at contact at baileyrichard.com. I have a Facebook group called the Infopreneur Community. You can just search for that and I'm always in there. You can tag me in that group as a way to get in touch with me. Um, you know, I love, I love communicating with my audience audience and I always answer I was just telling you before we did this interview that I always answer all my emails yeah. um, and they always you know they come to me so uh, yeah contact at baileyrichard.com or my website baileyrichard.com awesome well you have the email you have the website guys go ahead take action reach out to Bailey she's absolutely phenomenal and she has a lot of value to add go ahead and take action okay I always urge you guys to go ahead and take action and how awesome would it be if you just reach out to Bailey just start the conversation and say you know what I love that interview you mentioned such and such things that was really powerful I could totally relate to that just start the conversation you don't know where it's gonna go right you really don't Absolutely. know just go ahead take action and send that email okay or go on the website and see what awesome stuff you can find there so that's great Bailey now I usually like to do a quick fire round towards the end of the interview. Okay, just like okay. maybe two, okay. three short questions. Uh, just a quick rapid fire round. Is that okay? Sounds great. I'll try. 
Okay, cool. So, Bailey, what has been your favorite failure? Oh, my favorite failure? Mm. Um, okay, so I so I told you that I started off by doing travel books and stuff like that, right? So yeah. I, I think it's a failure. So my very first book ever that I wrote, I spent like nine months writing it, and then I launched it, and I had no audience. I didn't know what I was doing back then. I had no website. I had no audience. So it was just basically like friends and family that bought it, and it was like a total dud, right? That's what motivated me to be successful, though, because I was like, I spent all of this time learning how, to, like, writing this book, I mean, so I need to learn how to sell it. Yeah. You know, I, so, well, I think that's the interesting thing about people who become infopreneurs, and that's why they need coaches like me, is that a lot of times, we, they have a passion, right? They're good at origami, they're good at hair care, but they don't know business. Yeah. They don't know marketing, they don't mm. know, you know? So, well, that was me, you know? So I was in travel, like, I love travel, so I wrote this book about travel. I spent nine months writing this book, and then I launched it, and I had no audience, and, like, it really didn't sell, and obviously things got way better because I put in the effort to learn, you know, I took programs and I read and I did all this stuff and that's how I, I figured it out and found success. But that, that's a, a failure that kind of jumps out at me. I never really think anything's a failure, but that's, <laughs> but that's, but that's one of those things where I was like, Oh, this did not work out. Like I thought it was going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why I phrased the question that way. What's your favorite yeah. failure? Because yeah, yeah. really, you know, uh, what did you learn from it and what did you go ahead and, and, you know, kind of improved on, etc. Yeah. So yeah, awesome, great story. So next question, what's the one book or podcast or show, anything like that, that's had the biggest impact? Oh gosh, well, I, I mean, I know it's probably been said a million times before, but when I read The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, I was oh, yeah. really, yeah, I was really motivated. I actually picked up his book in an airport. So I was literally just bored and kind of looking for something to read. And it was the time that his book was out the first time. You know, he has a second edition now. But this was, I mean, how many years ago is this? So many years ago. I was yeah. back in college. I was an undergrad. So this was like 2007 or something. This was wow. way before like I ever decided to be an entrepreneur, before I ever decided to quit my job. This was like many years in advance. But... That book did influence me a lot. I picked it up in the airport because of the title. I was like, oh, four hour work week? That's kind of interesting. And even though I didn't immediately implement, you know, I didn't go into business immediately for myself after reading that book, a lot of the things that he said in that book um, stuck with me. Because the book is, it's partially how to do business, but it's also partially getting you to rethink your mindset about life, right? So I think that when um, I, my quarter life crisis came, I did kind of think back to, you know, I think this is, I could be an entrepreneur. I could do this. Life could be different. You know, other people have done it. So I think that was kind of motivating. There's also a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is also super famous. Um, Robert Kiyosaki, I think is his last name. Yeah, yeah. And ba yeah basically, um, that's a fantastic intro book to personal finance, just basically teaching you. Honestly, the whole book is about, um, you'll never get rich if you are just trying to save your way to getting rich. Like, it doesn't work like that. And he teaches you, you know, what is an asset versus a liability and kind of gets you thinking about budgeting and personal finances in a way that I'd never been taught before. So, um, and he does it in such, he doesn't talk down to you, but he does it in such a, an elementary simple way that even if you hate talking about money and you hate accounting and all that stuff, you're going to enjoy the book. So it, that was really good too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and both those books are absolutely amazing. So yeah, if, if you're watching this, you haven't heard about those books before, you haven't read them yet, go ahead and grab a copy. They're awesome. Okay, uh, final question. Who's the one person who has taught you the most important life lesson? Wow, that is such like a deep question. It's almost like really hard to answer. Um, you know, I... I'm sure other people have said this before, but you know, my parents have been like hugely influential on me. I'm so close with my father and they both, my, both of my parents, they teach me, you know, really, really important life lessons. I think also actually thinking about my mom, when I was younger, um, one of the life lessons she taught me that's really stuck with me a lot is I, we were, we, she basically said, you know, you can try as hard as you want to get, you know, where you want to go. But some things are out of your control and you mm. have to be willing to accept that in life. And so one of the things that she talked to me about was like trying to be president. You know, she said, you can try to be president as hard as you want, 
but the people might not vote you into office. And so some things in life are out of your control. You know, she said, you can, you can want to be an astronaut as badly as you want. And you can do all the things you have to do, go to flight school and training and all that stuff. Yeah. But if the panel doesn't pick you, you just, you'll never get that chance. So from a very early age, she taught me to work really, really hard at the things that I wanted because that's the only way you have a chance, right? Yeah. Like you, and, and even if you don't really always get exactly what you wanted, good things are still going to happen out of all of your hard work. But you have to also be okay in life with the fact that some things are out of your control. You're not going to get everything that you want. Um, life changes on an instant and you have to be willing to adapt and you have to be willing not to, you know, let your whole life crumble over it. You know, you still have to find ways to be happy and fulfilled, even if you don't get exactly what you want. And so I think that instilled in me from a very early age, this desire to work really, really, really hard for all of the things that I want, but still be realistic. And with that attitude, amazing things have come, you know, even, no matter what the outcome is, amazing things happen along the way, you know? Awesome. Awesome. Um, and if your mom ever does decide to run for presidency, then she can definitely have my vote because she sounds <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And again, a really, really powerful life lesson. Uh, and thank you for sharing that. I think that added a lot of value to all of us, really. Um, and uh, yeah, say, you know, say thanks to mom. Um, she's, <laughs> she's awesome. That's fantastic. I will. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, Bailey, this is this has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, you've added a lot of value. You are an awesome person. You have a lot of energy. I love that. I love the fact you brought in so much energy. It really got me excited. And then I then I get like ready to, you know, run through brick walls and start ripping tanks and all that kind of awesome stuff, right? So that's what I'm feeling right now, which is phenomenal. Um, I just want to quickly ask you, at the moment, where can we help you right now? Oh, gosh. I mean, just, you know, download the book, honestly. Like, I just want people to know that there is an other, there are other options in life, you know, that if they're feeling like I was feeling back in the day, back in 2013, around my quarter life crisis, that there are other options and that you haven't, you have a right to explore those other options, you know, whether it's infopreneurship or something else you know, you have a right to, you know, to try and figure out the best path for your life. So the way you can help me is honestly, if you were thinking that this is something interesting, you know, download the book and read it. I know it's going to motivate you and it's super practical. So it's going to give you a lot of tips to getting started and also just to share this knowledge, you know, so if, if you know someone in your life, that this could be, um, you know, good information for, you know, maybe they're struggling with their job or they've mentioned that they've always kind of wanted to start a personal brand or something like that. Share this interview, share my website, you know, give them the tools and the resources that they might need in order to kind of get started themselves. That's all that I ask. Oh, awesome. That is phenomenal. Well, Bailey, thank you so much. And for people who are watching this, I think this has been one of the most awesome interviews I think uh, we've we've done on, on the channel. It's, it's, been, oh, it's been mind blowing. It's been absolutely awesome. Bailey just added a lot of value to us. Not just that, but the topics that we talked about, the things we discussed and Bailey's story. I mean, there's so much that I can relate to straight away and I'm sure you guys can as well. And Bailey was so open, very giving, very kind and just totally transparent and authentic. And I think that's the thing that really stood out to me throughout this whole conversation. And I'm sure you have had lots of takeaways. Me and Bailey would love to just connect with you and find out what were your aha moments, what were your main takeaways. So leave your comments below and just reach out. I think Bailey is somebody who is absolutely phenomenal. And to be honest with you, when I bring on a guest, it's usually because I believe in them. I believe in what they're doing. I believe in the message. I believe in, you know, who they are. But connecting with Bailey today has been just tremendous. Okay. And I know you guys would have learned a lot and it would have added a lot of value to you as well. So it would be fantastic if we all reached out and said thank you to Bailey just to start the conversation, send a quick message, send an email, go visit her site and download that book, okay, which she's just talked about. And also check out the Infopreneur Summit that's happening from the 19th to the 22nd of February. Link below, check it out now. Other than that, as always, make sure you share it with somebody close to you, somebody who needs to hear these uh, these ideas, this this message. It's so powerful, okay, to take control of your life when you feel stuck, when you feel down, when you're frustrated, and there's just no other way. You just can't see it. But there, there is somebody who can. 
right? And that's why you need mentors and amazing people in your life, like Bailey, who can show you where life can really take you and what's really truly possible for them. So, uh, for you, sorry. And again, go ahead, take action. I always urge you guys to take action, and this is what I'm saying right now. Again, go ahead, take action, reach out to Bailey. She is awesome. Bailey, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. It has been absolutely tremendous. And yeah, I'm, I'm ready to wrestle lions and, and, and like, you know, just it's, I, I'm, I'm high on energy and I love it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure you hustle hard, you take action, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. All the best.